Bitcoin has been showing some signs of stability in the past 24 hours um, after a period of really intense volatility. So how do you interpret this? And do you think this current stability is a positive sign for Bitcoin? Yes, generally speaking, I mean, we've been talking about this for a long time already. The more we see stability in price, uh, the better it leads, the more it leads to adoption. Um, people can use it as a store of value better if they're more certain that it's going to hold its value over the time frame that they're looking to hold it. Um, so yes, flat prices um, are good. What we'd like to see is some sort of a steady incline rather than extreme volatility. However, because of the limited supply of Bitcoin, uh, volatility is inherent in the price. What's interesting to note uh, that over the last week we've seen uh, volumes coming down. So this is the Masari website who tracks the real 10 uh, or the top 10 brokerages uh, showing less than a billion dollars traded on Bitcoin. Uh, the CME group is showing something similar uh, as is the uh, Bitcoin blockchain itself. Uh, we can see that uh, daily transaction is estimated to be below $1.4 billion per day. Um, which is definitely a downtick from where we were trading uh, a few weeks ago as well. The transactions per second, a little plunge over there, uh, now tracking about uh, 3.65 transactions per second. Um, so all in all, we're looking at reduced volumes, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing, uh, but it does show that the excitement has come off. Uh, for those of you who are concerned about the security of the network, however, as soon as blockchain's uh, website is updating, there we go, uh, hash rate is at uh, pretty much the all-time highs over there, definitely much higher than it was uh, during the height of the crypto excitement in uh, 2017. We can see, you know, December 2017 levels over here. Uh, we are way above that at the moment. So moving off of Bitcoin now on to altcoins, have you seen any interesting altcoin patterns happening? Overall, I mean, there are two altcoins that have been outperforming so far. This is, we're looking at uh, some of the most, uh, some of the best performing cryptos since the lows of mid-December. Um, top one, uh, BNB coin by far 569% gains, Litecoin with 300% gains, beating Bitcoin, but 220% uh, you know, in seven months, it's not really all that bad, uh, to say the least. Um, for those uh, who have been calling for kind of an altcoin season, I don't think we're there yet. Yes, altcoins are, are outperforming a little bit today. Uh, they outperformed a little bit yesterday, but I think that in order to call something a season, it needs to be done over more time. Uh, the other thing that I've been uh, seeing people say, which is absolutely not true lately, is that XRP is now negatively correlated with Bitcoin. It, it's, it's completely false. Uh, this shows the correlations between Bitcoin and some of the top altcoins. Um, so XRP is actually this green line over here, and we can see that it sh shares a 0 0.8 correlation with Bitcoin. The entire crypto market right now is very correlated. Now, um, some people have this kind of feeling that, yes, as the market matures, uh, we're going to see less correlation where, you know, Bitcoin can go one direction and an altcoin can go a different direction and we have markets going all different ways. Uh, rather, I would argue the opposite. As the market matures, it will be more correlated and not less. It's something that we can see in the stock market, you know, traditional markets, um, something that's within the same uh, asset class is more likely to be moving in the same direction. Uh, so for example, Apple stock and Tencent, right, they're on different ends of the world and have different kind of business models and different customers and uh, they're completely different companies, uh, yet um, their, their price tends to move in the same direction at the same time. That's because of the macroeconomic forces at play. So uh, yes, the crypto market is extremely correlated at the moment, uh, much more so than it was. Uh, in 2016 when the market was less mature. Interesting. Um, talking a little bit now, I guess, about like the more traditional side, um, traditional financial side of cryptocurrencies. I'm going to mention Libra and their interaction with regulators last week on Capitol Hill when uh, a lawyer named Marco Santori sent up the problem facing Libra just in one tweet, which I'm going to read here, where he said, at these hearings, Libra is in an impossible position. It must be centralized enough to prevent illicit activity by freezing funds, 
but decentralized enough not to discriminate against participants based on the use of the funds. So do you agree with his analysis and sentiment here? It's an interesting call, and I think that that actually might apply to a lot of altcoins, actually. Um, and what we see the stance from uh, Facebook is that they want to be uh, kind of less decentralized at the beginning, and then as they go, move into a more decentralized uh, uh, fashion. And this is what a lot of altcoins are doing well. We saw the same uh, from the likes of IOTA, uh, the same from the likes of NEO. NEO came out and said, we're a centralized platform to begin with, and we actually want to move into a more decentralized way. So we need to look at decentralization uh, not as a binary uh, factor, but like as a slider. There are things that are less decentralized and more decentralized, um, and that slider can move over time. So the eToro CEO was invited by Justin Sun to be joined during this week's upcoming Warren Buffett lunch that Justin Sun bid, you know, an ungodly amount of money to win. $4.57 million. Yeah. <laughs> for, for lunch. Yes. Well, not, in, not including the three Michelin star restaurant bill that he's going to have to pick up afterward. Yeah, it's... Um, we spoke to him about that, actually, and I hope we'll speak to him again after the lunch and see if he thinks, you know... The expense was worth it, um, but one of the participants of the lunch is going to be the CEO of eToro as of this week, and he said that it's going to be an important step connecting the traditional financial world with the new financial world. So do you think this event can bring anything to the crypto space, like any benefits apart from the big media hype around it right now? Um, yes, yeah, so I think that this is a lot about the media hype, but it's, I think, more about um, Warren Buffett himself as kind of... Uh, the leader of traditional finance, the Oracle of Omaha, just about every investor on the planet looks up to him. And uh, that includes a lot of the people that are going to be at that lunch, right? So it was a bit of a stab in the heart for them to hear, you know, Warren Buffett coming out so against Bitcoin right off the beginning. Um, and as we found, a lot of people don't necessarily know exactly what Bitcoin is about. So um, what we need to think about, uh, we, we need to think about this as a business lunch, but also as a sales pitch. Um, and, you know, our friends from the crypto community have their, really have their work cut out for them. Um, it's going to be probably the toughest sale of, the, of their lives. But I think that the answer to your question is going to be contingent on if they are successful or not. I, I think that Warren Buffett, uh, as a wise man, is going to come into this with an open mind. Uh, the question is how he's going to go out of it. Um, Yoni Asi, I think, is a perfect, uh, a perfect candidate. Um, actually, I tweeted to Justin Sun uh, a day after the announcement, uh, which he actually retweeted. Uh, these were my top picks. As you can see, Yoni Asia bridging traditional finance and traditional markets with crypto. Um, we still have another three picks, so I, I hope that uh, some of these people on the list uh, make it in. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.